Momo Guru here and welcome to the CLV2 tutorial series. Alright, so you've just created a brand new account and you've landed on this gateway desktop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. Up here in the upper left hand corner you have your connection status. Right next to that you have four main icons that represent your connection, your memory, your CPU, and your hard disk components. Under that a health value for each one of those. Right here you'll see the satnet that we're currently connected to and the date and time on the game server. Over on the upper right we have our trace tracker and our CPU taskbar. At the bottom right hand side you'll notice a large number of blank boxes and that represents our current memory bar. Currently we don't have any programs installed. Over here on the bottom left hand side you'll notice that we have a blinking email button and five other main icons. Let's go ahead and explore these now. The first icon that we're going to take a look at is the file. Click the file and open the file management system module. From here you're going to get an overview of what files you currently have on your gateway. You'll notice four main icons here. These represent the four files that are currently on our hard disk. Over here to the left you'll see a program memory overview showing us how much memory we have installed, how much we're currently using, and how much is available. Underneath that you'll have a hard disk overview showing the total number of files, the current size of your hard disk, how much space has been used, and how much is available. Let's go ahead and install a program by clicking and dragging it down into the memory bar. The first program you're going to want to install as a new player is Momo's chat box. Click the program, drag it down into the memory bar, and release it. Once that happens, a memory installation module will pop up and you'll have to wait a few moments for the progress to complete. Our program has finished installing, but before we close this module, take note that you can also view your programs, files, scripts, and documents by using the details view. By clicking on a file, it will tell you additional information about that file. Go ahead and close this module now. In our memory bar you'll notice a new icon. You can launch this program by clicking or dragging it onto the desktop. Now I've jumped into the Momo's chat box chat room. Other players can assist me. Let's go ahead and close the chat box. The next module we're going to take a look at is this blinking email button. Let's open the email module by clicking it. It will default to all new messages, and you can see we have a welcome message from the CSA, the CodeLink Security Agency. They give us a nice little greeting, and they tell us to head over to the CodeLink Orientation Server. So let's go ahead and do that now. Connecting to a computer in CodeLink is not really that complicated, but it's important to pay attention to a little bit of information here because it can help you out in the long run. The first thing you're going to want to do is connect to your GPS module. It will default and open to a large picture of a map with a bunch of server dots located all over the map. If you mouse over the server dots, it's going to give you the server name and whatever its domain address is. We're looking for the CodeLink orientation server. Now you can sit here and manually mouse over every dot until you find it, or you can go up here and click the database view. By clicking the database view, it's going to display all the servers on that satellite network. We're currently connected to the server satellite network, which is the default for the game. All new players will end up in this network. There are various networks throughout the game, however, you're going to have to explore and find your way around them. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is connect to the CodeLink orientation server. You can do that by clicking on the name, and then, in the upper right hand corner of the module, clicking the connect button. This will pop open a little connection module, show you your connection progress. It goes through a few little steps, and once it's done, it will open the browser automatically and display whatever information that server has to display. Now that we've connected to the CodeLink orientation server, let's take a look at some of the links it provides. The video archive is an archive of tutorial videos just like this. They'll help new players get started in learning the game mechanics. The ORS chat room is a private chat room for new players to chat with veteran players about getting started. The public proxy, the log files, and the CodeLink satnet are very important links from the CodeLink orientation server. 
Let's take a look at each one individually. The public proxy is available, allowing your connection to bounce through the CodeLink orientation server, masking your point of origin. Be warned though, all your bounces do leave log files, so you'll need to go back and clean them up, otherwise you may become a target to veteran CodeLink players. Let's take a look at these log files. Here we're viewing 35 logs found here on the CodeLink orientation server. Each log created by various players show have a timestamp showing the actual date and time in which that player accessed this server. It shows the type of access, whether it was a direct access or the player was bouncing his connection through. Once again, be warned, having your user IP address visible to other players can make you a target. Here's an interesting log. This one shows that this player used the satellite access to bounce his connection into another network. Let's take a look at that now. Here in the CodeLink SatNet, we can bounce our connection into the global network. By clicking this link, it will disconnect us from any current connection on the current SatNet and bounce our connection into an entirely new network. Let's take a look now. By clicking it, a new module pops open in our GPS module and the satellite network transfer begins. Once the progress is complete, a new map will load and new servers are displayed. We have now bounced our connection into the global SatNet. And again, we can view all servers available in the global SatNet. A hub server is there to provide you access into another SatNet. Each of these hubs will bounce you into the respective country. Each SatNet gets more difficult as you progress. Let's click the CodeLink SatNet hub and press the connect button. Now that we've bounced into the CodeLink SatNet hub, let's go ahead and bounce our SatNet back into the default server's network. Once the progress is completed, the new map will load and the new servers are displayed. Let's learn how bouncing our proxy route through another server can help us. First, we're going to connect to the CodeLink orientation server. Now that we've connected, point your mouse to the public proxy. From here, by clicking this link, we will bounce our connection from our gateway into the CodeLink orientation server. A warning message appears letting us know that we'll no longer be able to access the information on this server while we use it as a proxy. You can click the continue button. To the right you'll notice that the gateway is now bouncing through the CodeLink orientation server. And by checking out the global view you'll see that we now have a white line drawing from our gateway to the CodeLink orientation server. By clicking another computer you can see that our connection is currently being bounced through that server. To save this, click number 1 and then select Save Route. By doing so, we will no longer manually have to click through the proxy on the CodeLink orientation server. To view a demonstration of this, click Disconnect Gateway. Now click number 1. A new confirmation message appears saying that we will lose any connections we haven't saved. Press Continue. You can now see that our connection is bouncing through the CodeLink orientation server and we never had to load the browser. We can continue hacking server by server and stacking each proxy onto the chain. You can save these chains in various slots and copy and paste them by loading one chain, selecting an empty slot, and pressing saved. You can save multiple slots this way. You can also clear these slots by clicking clear. When clicking a slot that already has a route loaded, just press the cancel button and then hit clear. Now that we understand how proxies work, how log files work, and how to bounce our connection into another satellite network, let's take a look at our hardware. Go ahead and close the GPS module. The fourth icon in is the hardware icon. Go ahead and open it. This will launch the hardware configuration module. Right here you're going to get a list of all the hardware components associated with your motherboard. The motherboard we currently have is the default motherboard, along with the default power, modem, memory, CPU, disk, 
and the only plugin available, the email client. Over here to the right, we have a small menu that will allow us to perform a few functions like unplug all the hardware but your power, unplug all the hardware, request the service repair, which will allow the CSA tech representatives to repair your system for a fee, and down here, an extra hardware box for any hardware components you haven't installed on your system. All right, let's go ahead and close the hardware configuration module and take a look at the agent module. Once the agent profile module is loaded, you can see on the left some information about the profile and on the right, the mission server. Let's take a look at the agent profile. It shows the player's name, the user IP address, the level, experience, credits, and loyalty points, the missions completed, criminal violations, and missions aborted, your reputation, your law enforcement status, and any bank accounts associated with this agent. Over to the right we have the mission server. The missions are listed out according to the level of the servers available and the level of the player. We won't be doing any missions in this tutorial, but at least now you know where you'll be able to find them. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the basic options of the GUI interface. For example, you can move everything around by dragging these small diamond-shaped icons. You can arrange your desktop any way you want and have it displayed a certain way for you next time you log in. To do so, all you'll need to do is access the options. Under General Options, you can change the sound options, turn it on or off, or adjust the volume. You can also change the connection sound effect. If you're tired of getting those mission emails, you can turn those off here as well. Under GUI options, the main buttons and program buttons can be resized and the orientation on which they're displayed can also be changed. You can change these from vertical to horizontal and the main buttons can even be changed into the menu version. You can change the scale of these buttons by clicking the size number. You can also change the scale of which the windows are maximized and the window scale minimized. If you want to resize the CodeLink desktop after resizing the window, go ahead and click Reset CodeLink Desktop. If you want it to remember the positions of where you placed everything, make sure you turn this option on, Remember Desktop Object Positions. Every once in a while, a player decides he wants to remove his account. By removing your account, it will allow you to create a new account. If you want to do this, click the Delete Account button and press through the various confirmation screens. If you'd like to load a desktop background, all you need to do is change the information displayed here. Paste in a path of an image that you have online or a local path placed in the CodeLink folder. If you want to minimize the window, click Minimize Window button. The dual monitor options are only there for those who are using CodeLink in dual monitor mode. To quit the game, press save and quit, or if after making some significant purchases you'd like to manually save the game instantly, go ahead and press the save button. Now that we've finished moving everything around, we can reset this by going into the GUI options and pressing Reset Code Link Desktop. It will place all of our icons back in their appropriate positions. Go ahead and close the options module. Let's take a look further at our programs. Open up the file module, minimize it, and drag over the MP3 player. The speed at which these programs install are determined by the size of the file and the speed of the processor and the quality of your hard disk. If you don't want to watch this window, you can click the checkbox. The window will now be hidden until the program is installed and you will see it appear over here on the memory bar. After we install the MP3 player, let's go install the file copy program. The MP3 player has been installed. Let's drag over the file copy program now. You will notice that it shows a memory requirement for each file that's being installed into memory. As these programs are installed, you can see over here that the memory installed 
the memory in use, and the memory free state updated. Now the file copy program has been installed, and you can see that the memory free has jumped a little bit lower. Let's go ahead and close the file management system. To launch a program, once again, we either click the program or we can drag it onto the desktop. When dragging the program, you'll notice a small targeting reticule. This will allow you to pinpoint particular files when hacking through security checkpoints and collecting information from a server mission. Let's go ahead and test out our file copy program locally. Open up the file manager. Now that the file manager is open, scoot it over to the side so we can see our CPU taskbar. By clicking the file copy program, we can minimize it or maximize it bringing it to the front of the screen. Let's go ahead and target a file by dragging the program on top of the file killer program. You'll notice a connection has been established between the two and press the copy button. The speed at which it copies depends on the, the level of program you're using and the speed of your system. Let's go ahead and close the file copy program. You'll notice that we now have an extra file, the file killer. Let's go ahead and install that now. Drag the program onto the memory bar. Now that the file killer is installed, let's go ahead and give it a test run by dragging it onto a file, the file killer. Let's go ahead and use the program we've installed to remove the installation package. Now the file's been removed. Let's go ahead and close the program. If we take a look at the memory being used now, you can see that we only have 39 free. We've almost used half of the memory we have available on this system. I think it's time we upgrade. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the CPU taskbar. I'm going to drag out the file copy program. You can see that it uses 50 CPU. I only have a total of 75 available. Let's drag out the file killer program. You can see now that I've used all the CPU available running these two programs. If I try to launch a third program, let's say Momo's chat box, you can see that I'm getting an error. The CPU is overloaded. Because of the limitations of my system, I can only run two files that equal 75 CPU. I think now it's time we go ahead and upgrade. But before we do, we're going to need to collect some extra money. I'm going to show you in the next tutorial how to get started 